Hi, and welcome to the ninth video in the series about UFN maps optimization. In this video, I want to talk a bit about the lights and how to work with them. Let's begin. Lights are always part of our level. Do we want that or not? They're always there. At least one main one, our sun. Sun is actually directional light. And we can always add, especially if we will have some interior, we need to add some additional lights. And I want to explain in this video how actually it's better to work with them. Because sometimes um, people don't know, especially if they're not from Unreal, it's like how you can even preview. And before, and even still, even, even now, um, many games, they baking lights. It's basically what it means. It's, it's create textures, uh, lots and lots of uh, large textures which actually keeps lighting and shadows inside of them. So you're sacrificing size of the project, and, but same time, then in the real, in the runtime, when you're rendering uh, all these lights, um, it's much cheaper because you don't have any more lights because they're not dynamic. You bake them and you remove them. But dynamic, they need to be calculated. So let's add light, point light, for example. And let's add a simple shape. So how calculation works? Again, in my old videos, I don't want to go into really deep technical stuff. So I want to be as simple as possible. But why dynamic lights painful? Because basically what it's done, engine takes light position and it renders again from that light position to calculate uh, these uh, shadows. So that's why first thing you can hear all the time people saying, don't use shadows, uh, shadow casting on all lights. Yeah. So you can have main lights where it's super, super important to have shadows. Otherwise your scene may look really flat. But if you have some supportive lights, for example, in my level, Forbidden Land, I have uh, lots of fireplaces, right? If I would cast shadows from each of them, that would be a nightmare. So I'm not casting there, but light is there, so it's working. So you can always disable it here, right? And because it's again, it's you need to render. So imagine that you have lots of that and actually point light, it's the worst because uh, engine needs to calculate 360 degrees because it can cast on anything from in all angles. Comparing to spotlight, as you can see, it's more like a directional light, right? So it has direction and you can set angle you know, of this cone. So first rule, so if you can use spotlight instead point light, always use that. And sometimes let's say you can place it like that above the cube, right? But you actually want that something on this cube, maybe it's statue or something. Maybe you want that thing to be lit, yeah, like that. And if you're putting a point light, it's basically casting on everything and even up, like on the ceiling or something. But instead, you could just take spotlight, right? You can position it on top of that, like that. So it's one thing how you can do. Or another thing, you can do it from the angle like that. Of course, you always need to think that a player may come and um, hover that lighting. But because you're not casting shadow, you won't actually see that player blocking that light. It's a uh, one thing. Another thing, super cool, is that you can tell who can react with your light. So in the cube, I can go in here and there is lighting channels. I can set, for example, disable zero. And as you can see, it straight away stops working with directional light. Now it has this uh, second channel. And now in my uh, spotlight, I can change lighting into second one. And as you can see, I've got my shadows now here. And if I will start moving that, you can see that it actually reacts. And actually to see it better, let's change color. So let's set it to green and uh, maybe medium. Yeah, there is. 
without lumen is very visible. And now this one, let it be red. Like that. And now look, if I'm coming closer with red, and there is nothing. Until again, I will change this from 0 to 2, and now bam. Pretty cool. So in this way, you can set that, oh, this object, for example, should react only to second channel or to first channel, right? While our sun, it's a channel 0, and player reacts to 0 channel. So you can um, separate it uh, that way, and then less object will be affected by that. Less object is basically better. Because when you uh, when engine calculates um, the lighting, right, and sh especially shadows, and not just on the lighting, but especially shadows, it's kind of like it duplicates your mesh. So that's why if you would start profiling, which we can't in UFN, but in Unreal, if you would start profiling, let's say if your mesh 1000 triangles, and now you're enabling lights with a shadow, you will see that now it's 2000 triangles from nowhere, and you have only one object in the scene. And this is because of that. And more lights you have, more shadows, and more polygons, especially with super dense polygons, that can go really crazy. So the, the changing channels, really super useful. And you can play with lots of parameters in here. But yeah, it's a one thing. Another thing, maybe not many people know, I already mentioned on the Twitter that we can still have, like, enable different previews, which alt and number previews. And normally in Unreal, it could go in here, but in here we're missing lots of them. But same as, for example, previewing material complexity, which actually, I don't know why it's not working. But for example, here it's unlit scene. Here is wireframe. And this is, for example, lit with wireframe. And this is actually light complexity. Super, super useful, especially maybe someone in the level added some lights and they forgot about them and they may be so dim you don't see them but actually they contributing to draining performance but in here you can straight away see and for example because uh, this one it's on level uh, on the channel 2 so you see here it's not contributing but now if i will use two channels nobody stops us to use even three channels per light so you can see it's now green in here because it's casting an object, something, and it requires calculation. And in here we have our guide, a guideline, which says like from the good and then into extremely bad in white color. But what you need to realize that we have this radius, right? And dynamic lights, they really, really don't like to share space with other dynamic lights. What I mean by that, look, if I will duplicate the light, bam, look, now it's red in here and what if i will duplicate again oh now look where it is and if it's again oh and we're in really super extremely bad in a white color because all the lights they have this radius yeah affection radius and you need to try like not always possible but you need to try as much as possible um to separate the lights to have them as separate as possible so like that, right? Maybe that one now is there. Now this one is there, right? Kind of like flower. But we still have same amount of lights, four. But now we have only a super tiny place with a white and then purple, right? And of course, we have this uh, red and orange. But it's still, it's not so bad as it was. So, of course, like we need to limit but it's not always possible. Same time, we can always check, do we really want this radius, right? So you see, attenuation radius, it's 1000 by default. I can lower that, see, like that. Sometimes we really need large one, but usually when I need large one, even sometimes like that, I don't have any lights or many lights around it. This is my, for example, main lit, um, this light. And plus I'm using lots of um, these spotlights. So as you can see, world space. So we can have it like that. But we can control it easier. So maybe remove this large one. 
but let's say if I will have now spotlight and now let's duplicate it and then duplicate it and duplicate it. Now move that one there, this one. So you see these lights pretty close to each other, but actually they're all green because they're only casting to one direction. They're not overlapping. And this is one of the most like biggest reasons why spotlight is better than point light. It's, it's again, it's not always possible. But yeah, keep that in mind. And last thing what I want to add is basically when to remove lights. Some people, they don't know that we have these features. Maximum draw distance. Our static meshes have that in here, you see, in LODs. And lights have that. And it's pretty cool. So let's go back in here. So fade range and then draw distance. So fade range is basically to create smooth transition. And let's say it's 1000. And like that. So you see, now it's disabled. If I'm moving really close, and I, it's a really small number, let's put it bigger. 5000. And transition. Yeah, maybe 1500. It's basically calculation, it starts, but visually it should start. Let's increase intensity. Here we go. That uh, inner. Go. Just to better see this uh, green color. And you can see that it really nicely, softly starts. Yeah, and diminishes. See? So while we see it really nicely and smoothly, back in here, it works like that. Because it already starts calculation. It's just only smoothly uh, visually represents it. But uh, this distance, it's super important. So in every map when I was working, I was carefully looking, okay, where I should enable each light and where I should disable that. Okay, so hopefully... This will help you again with all your maps and you now will know better how to work with dynamic lights, when to use shadows, when not to use shadows, when to use channels, when to use spotlights instead of point lights. You can use directional lights as well. So directional lights, it represents our sun. It's basically doesn't have beginning, doesn't have end. It just only have direction. And we have rectangular light it's basically same it's basically as a area light and yeah so hopefully all this will be helpful to you have fun i would like to say thank you to my all supporters i appreciate your support thank you for your generosity you can join our growing discord community where we like to discuss ufn tips and tricks showcase our work and help each other you can find link in the description or in the channel header you can get project files on my patreon or just buy me a coffee to support me. If you're interested in learning more about UFN materials, coding, widget UI and more, feel free to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications when new videos will be released. See you soon.